Welcome to season five of Own Your Divine Light show. I am your host, Yara Atlantica Miller, also known as Janet Miller. And the theme of this show is the, the divine human rising. And it is covering our sacred truth. This show is an exploration of the secret truths that have been concealed from us. We are letting go of that old system that no longer works for us and hells us back from becoming the divine humans we are meant to be. Today, we are having two amazing guests, Tyler Koala and Aaron Kuhn. They are the podcast hosts of the highly regarded Journey to, po to Truth podcast, and I am very excited to have them here today. So welcome, welcome, Aaron and Tyler. So happy to have you here. We're happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you. So together, Tyler and Aaron have created a platform for discussing any and all controversial and eye-opening topics without limitation and effort to spread awareness to the masses. So individually, Tyler is an experiencer, a researcher, and a host of the podcast show. Tyler has also had a number of experiences that you can hear about through many other podcasts, and they're very interesting, exciting ones, such as levitation, sleep paralysis, interference with the negative entities, contact with extra dimensional beings, and involvement with potential black project, pro budget projects like the Secret Space Program. Aaron, after being brought up in a very religious Christian home, began to question his reality. His questions led to five years of research where he unveiled many of the illusions he and we are all living under. He has recreated his belief system to coincide with his devotion to, to advocate for disclosure. He is also an avid researcher and a podcast host, and together, Last year, they had their first Secret Space Conference in May 2022, which was hugely successful. And this year, they are again creating another amazing conference in May of 2023, and tickets are still available. So I am so thrilled that you're doing that. And um, who knows, I may get there yet. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm thinking about it. So, you know, welcome again. I'm so happy to have you both here. Yeah, so, we... We'd love to see you there too. So I know yeah. um, you, your guests are incredible. You just have the most groundbreaking information coming through when you both, you know, when you talk and you have your guests coming on your shows. So um, you both brought through so much information that has unveiled what our reality truly is. If you are awake, let's put it that way. So how would you talk about this illusion to someone who may not be awake yet, as we call it? How would you bring it up, Tyler? Oh man, I actually stopped trying to bring it up to the people a long time ago. Um, I that's one way. <laughs> what I do, if honestly, yeah. I, what I'll do is if I am talking with somebody, I'll I'll slip something into the conversation, what I call certain buzzwords, or and I'll see how they react to it. And mm -hmm. sometimes they'll chime in and respond with something. I'm like, okay, so they do know about this or that, you know, said subject. And I'll kind of just gauge where they're at on their journey based on the conversation. And if I feel like they'll, they're in a place to receive any new information about the illusion, like that we're living under, right? Um, the corruption, whatever's going on, all of it, the agendas. Um, if I feel like they're in a place to receive that, then, then I'll kind of poke the bear a little bit and just see what <laughs> they're ready for. Uh, it's, it's different. It's circumstantial. It's, it comes down to the individual where they're at and uh, the circumstances of the conversation and the setting where you are, you know, there's a time and place for it. Sometimes it's not a, the time or place for it, even though you know that person can probably uh, receive something at that moment. So um, you just have to kind of gauge where they're at and there's no like protocol for it. Like you, it's right. because like, if you just like, slam this information in their face and they're not ready for it it actually repels them and turns them off to the information and turns them off to you and it has a negative effect it's counterintuitive to do that so i don't know if that answers your question oh yeah it's perfect because i've i've experienced all of the above myself when it, everything started breaking open in 2020 i ended up you know trying to tell people don't do this don't do that you know and boy it was not well received so it took me a good while, maybe a year and a half to two years to re realize I shouldn't be saying anything else. But now I am. I agree with you. You have to really weigh it out and, and decide what, 
where is this person at? But I like to plant the seed. Like you have to plant something because that's our job. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we have to poke the bear. I say that all the time. I right. poke the bear, and, but I've been told I have to stop poking certain bears. <laughs> right. So, Aaron, what, how, do, how do you see that? How do you see the illusion and what, what, do you, what would you do with somebody? How would you talk to them about it? Yes, I second everything Tyler said. Um, and uh, that, this is what I've done for years now, where I, I kind of, you talk to somebody, you can get a feel for where they're at. You know, you get, you get a feel for what they're open to, what they're not, what their uh, interests are, you know, how spiritual they are, you know, um, how, you know, because a lot of this stuff, unfortunately, a lot of the information, you know, that we talk about is very, it can be very dark and uh, yes. traumatic, you know, because it, it's yes, just the yeah. nature of, it's just the, tr it's just the reality of what's been going on in, in a lot of these things on the planet. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people, if they're not at a good place, they can get caught up in the fear They can get caught up in fear and um, not be able to handle it well to put it mm -hmm. simply and that but then that's detrimental so it's almost like it would almost have a negative effect on a lot of people if you go too far with a lot of information that is in that realm um whereas some people that's all they're open to and you can talk to them about that but but they're not very open to spiritual information or the mm -hmm. deeper kind of mm -hmm. truths or, or the energetic things um so I, so I, and then some people you can talk to them about ETs and aliens and, um, you know, stuff like that and UFOs, but they're not really open to other things. So I always like gauge where somebody's at and where I can talk to them about and kind of like, and you only want to give, you want to give a little bit at a time because it's easy to get, and I've done it in the past where I get caught up on, the, on a monologue where I'm just going I'm just get on a roll where I'm just like going through all, everything. And then it, you can tell where you just like overload the person or turn them off where they're just like, Oh, either this guy's crazy or a crazy conspiracy theory, whatever. Or, uh, or it's just too much for them. Their brain can't handle that much at once. And they just, they, then they don't want to hear anything, you know, so it can, that can have a negative effect. So you really want to like you, gauge where they're at, gauge where you can, you can kind of plant those seeds or say a little bit and then if they let them chew on that or or if they ask more questions answer their questions let them kind of lead the conversation more uh get or ask them questions this is what i like to do is ask people questions to get their own brain uh get their wheels turning on a certain topic you know or, yeah. in, or in a certain direction to kind of lead them because a lot of times you do that and they'll naturally uh go down the same path that we've gone down but they but they've been so stuck or not really no one's ever really like led them down that path until now you know mm -hmm. uh or you know a lot of people there's a lot of obviously mind control and programming on the planet as we know and uh lies and a lot of people have a lot of beliefs that are only the only reason they believe them is because they're programmed into them by society, by the mainstream media, education, religion, go down the list. Um, so I like to throw, plant little seeds out there to get them questioning their own beliefs, which is what I did to myself years ago with my awakening. Mm -hmm. I started just asking myself, why do I, wait, why do I believe this? It's, you know, I started realizing almost every belief I had was just something programmed into me. And, and I just kind of didn't, I just, believed them i didn't even know why i believed most of what i believe you know and that's a lot of people on the planet they don't even know why they believe what they believe they just it's a program and they want to fit in with their friends and family they want to be accepted exactly yeah. go down the list you know so you yeah. get them like because also a lot of people don't actually want the truth is what you realize unfortunately they just want comfortable they want to have a comfortable good life be accepted you know have a good job have family and they don't want to rock the boat <laughs> like they don't want to disturb that so what you realize is a lot of people you'll start talking about a lot of this stuff and they're like don't i, I don't even want to hear this like this mm -hmm. is this is too outside of my comfort zone i just want to be comfortable this is this is making me uncomfortable 
and and sometimes this is too scary for me to even consider so don't even tell i don't want to even hear that you know you'll get this like wall shut down and i've experienced that a lot so you really got to gauge where somebody's at and you just you know your energy alone though uh is affecting everyone around you constantly uh and that's that's almost the most important thing and and that's subconscious and people you just like Dolores Cannon talks about this like we're all affecting everyone around us on an energetic level whether we realize it or not and uh you know really the main purpose of star seeds came here is to just be here and to affect the planet and to affect those around us on an energetic level and to anchor in the light and the energies mm -hmm. and to hold that you know on the planet Right. And it's like, you could just not, you technically don't have to do anything. You just, you being here is affecting everything and, and, uh, is helping, you know, with well, you the do, shift. And you do have to be aware, uh, but yet you, you do have to be aware so you can break free from the programming and then you can be. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But that all, yeah, that was well said. And yeah, you don't like, awesome. Thank and you. just, just to piggyback on that, you don't yeah. want to be. Like he said, you don't want to be this alarmist and put fear into people. Yes. Right. Um, and so that's very, you just be cautious about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, that in the beginning, though, we were all trying to wade through it all and to figure out what's going on. So I think we we're all kind of alarmed. But now that we've learned so much, I mean, it's been three years. It's shocking how much has shifted in our world in many good ways. And, you know, so you talk about what is the our world within a world. You want to take that one, uh, Tyler? How did you know that that's one of the chapter titles in my book? Because it's... <laughs> is it really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm referring to the programs when I talk about it, the, the yeah. programs, a world within a world. But um, yeah, like every, our entire infrastructure has a double meaning. It's not, it's not what it appears to be on the surface. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some things are very surface level and very obvious. And yes, what you're looking at is what it is, but there's a lot of double meaning to everything. So, mm -hmm. and that's what creates the illusion. Um, it's so yeah, hard to, it's so hard to explain to someone who doesn't have a background in the secret societies and the secret space program and the cabal and the deep state and how they've been operating in mind controlling us, you know, since the beginning of time. Um, so when you explain to somebody, when you just jump in explaining like our infrastructure and how it's actually designed to support the dark agenda and the, even the, the, the buildings um, themselves are somehow designed like sports arenas and stadiums are designed for loose farming to siphon energy into their negative grid that they've placed around the planet and then feed them, literally feed them. Uh, they feed off of our, our loose. Our or, light. Or, yep. our, our light and our dark it doesn't matter yes. like the, the light feeds them too but the dark is even more potent mm -hmm. and um like in just like buildings like the, you have the secret space program right how do people get recruited into the secret space program yeah you can do it through means of the military and you can you know uh enroll in the military enlist i mean and go down that path of recruitment and then eventually go and be brought in that way but there's people who aren't in the military who are also brought in and they can be brought in and recruited via um just normal businesses or companies set up in their location that have a system set up to where if you if you they'll steer you they have a way to manipulate your uh steer you on in life steer your path so that you so that you eventually apply for this job or the job's placed in front of you and you're like, oh, wow, that's a good deal. I'm going to go work for this company. And then you'll kind of get fast tracked in the promotion process and they'll steer you into a portion of that company, a faction of that company that is doing recruiting for some sort of program, secret program, whether it's on or off planet. And that will be how um, they get some people. Some people, they're just taken unbeknownst to them uh, and it's, you know, just done in your sleep via an abduction scenario so there's many different ways but uh sometimes they do give you the option to consent and sign paperwork and join the program but the problem is is at the end at the end of it your mind wipes so you don't remember any of that prior to that or you might not even know that you did it and that's where people you lose people within the technology of how they're able to do that um which is an entirely different topic um, well, some I, I, people do remember. Some people come back and remember. Look at um, what's you know, 
Well, the, well, exactly. That's why we have what we, that's why we even know about it. Right. I mean, that's exactly, exactly why we're exactly. talking about this because the whistleblowers have been coming forward for years now. Uh, you know, people think that the secret space program was, you know, people started talking about it in like 2014 to 12 yeah. or whatever, but Michael Ralph, Stephanie Ralph, if you guys know who they are, they were whistleblowers that wrote a book in the year 2000 that talked about the 20 oh. and back program and that stuff. Really? And then, yeah, so mm -hmm. there we had whistleblowers coming out around the year 2000, uh, which is the and, earliest. And Gary McKinnon in 2002, who hacked right. the servers that revealed the Solar Warden and all the. Exactly. Um, really? Wow. I wasn't yeah, was 2002. Quite awake then. I mean, I was awake to spirituality, but not to this kind of information like the governmental projects and. Yeah, the, right. The so. Black budgets. Yeah. Yeah, so when yeah, Gary so it's exactly for a while. Yeah. when Gary hacked the NASA servers or the Navy, I think it was both. Um, he found mm -hmm. he found a database of what he called uh, well a space fleet, the name of ships that were be operational in space, a, a list of non-terrestrial officers, even a photograph of a miles long cigar shaped craft uh, just out hovering just outside of our planet, among many other things and programs and stuff that uh, you know. They, if you're hacking someone's database and you're finding that information, that's not a hoax. You know, there he he got into their files that weren't supposed to be exposed. That's why he's in jail. But that's enough. That's more evidence of the the secret space program. And William Tompkins talks about. Oh yeah. They were they were developing this stuff. You know, at least the United States post World War II is when this they hit the ground running with all these technologies and these programs. And it wasn't until 1980 when the, the Navy started their version of the 20 and back program. But um, there's just so much there, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to really have an understanding of what's actually been happening on this planet, what's been going on behind the scenes. Um, what we really have as far as the capacity to go into space and other planets. And then you can understand why like I said, there's everything's a double meaning. And if you, I, f I just found out recently from our guest, Mary Beaver, she said, you can Google spaceports. And I did it. And if you go on Google Maps and type in spaceports, there's these random spaceports all over the map. Really? Um, that they'll just, it'll be a pin drop in uh, like in the middle of a mountains or like in, there won't, sometimes there is a little airport there or a building. I mean, one of them is even a galactic spaceport. And it's just really interesting. I feel like they. this is how they tell you without telling you. Like, it's there, but they're not going to come out on the yeah. news and explain to you. So you you might think you're at an airport, but really it doubles as a spaceport, and you just don't know. And they have a way of cloaking themselves to where you would never know. Um, I can go on and on and on with this. I but... know. It's, it's, it's such a fascinating subject. And it's. I think it's important for people to hear some of this, because how will they ever break through this illusion, this world between worlds? So, Aaron, what, what would you like to add to that? Thank you, Tyler. Mm -hmm. You have anything to add to that? Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. It's it's this is all important um, to know about. It's it's important to know about the reality of the the world we're living in, in the in the matrix system we're living in. So you can so you can uh, navigate it, I guess you know, um, and realize that there so that we're living on a planet that is natural in my opinion and that is a you know the planet is a spiritual being and it's the ascension's happening and all that but there's this false matrix system with these dark controllers that it's like for thousands of years you know they they infiltrated basically the planet back in atlantis lemuria times and ever since then they've been they've been kind of manipulating things and and uh enslaving people in the population and mind controlling and doing black magic and all that and they created the money system that's why we have a money system because according to many whistleblowers and insiders most planets don't use money most most civilizations don't even use money because they don't need to uh at least at least at a certain level of advancement you know they um they have free energy they have technologies or they or they just live close to their to, to the to nature and you know more like native tribes and stuff like that they don't they don't use money you only use money when when you're enslaved <laughs> basically it's a it's a tool of enslavement 
So the fact that we even have a mo money system on our planet is proof alone that there is a slave system going on here. Um, and we're and there's some controller, there's a pyramid structure and there's controllers at the top of this pyramid that are manipulating things and uh, feeding off of the entire population essentially. And then the secret space program information is just another aspect of it where you know these these groups have gotten this advanced technology in different ways and teamed up with different negative kind of et groups and gone out into space and um because this is what the negative the advanced like negative et groups such as we hear the draco and the grays and things like that um what they do is they they go around the cosmos doing the same thing they enslave planets to feed off of and to and to use for trafficking and trading and all that and then they just do that over and over and over again they just go out and and enslave and conquer that's what they do that's that's kind of like all they know how to do it's it's kind of in their genetics i guess um and they've been doing it so long it's all they know so unfortunately you know our planet was infiltrated thousands of years ago and that's there's a long story of how that happened but Mm -hmm. and there's different theories of how it happened but it, it's happened i think that's what we can all agree on and so a lot of these secret space programs are very are run by these dark forces because they're basically using people using humans as slaves in different to, ways yes yeah yeah <laughs> to work in their programs and and yes. you know we have all these whistleblowers now coming out with getting their memories back and just saying hey this is this is what i remember of my experience you know this is mm -hmm. these are the memories i got back and right. um and but then there's also you could call them benevolent forces or you know, uh either people had that have defected that were in those programs or or you know there's like supposedly supposedly there's the navy has you know they're kind of like the more the good guys that are uh they're kind of like also have their secret space program but they're fighting this they're trying to fight for the freedom of the planet and humanity and they're also in space and there's all these benevolent ets that are now helping us because if they don't this could get way out of hand you know and it would affect them and many other civilizations so there's this big galactic it's almost like unless you know about the the ETs and the galactic information, not, it's not nothing's ever going to make sense because it all leads to that right. um, and the spiritual information as well. But and yeah. I, I'd like to add to that, um, hundred yeah, percent. You're hundred percent right and well said. But also uh, going back to the world within a world and the infrastructure, right? So then you have the five G towers, which aren't actually five G towers. They um, they double as something else as well. And obviously, one, they can control our minds with the technology that's installed on those towers. And two, they're pumping out a frequency via the satellite network and this tower network um, the, to encompass the entire planet that keeps the illusion going. And it's been described that a lot of these ETs, um, they're, so there's ETs existing among us, like reptilians, and like they're, or they call them the shapeshifters. Shapeshifters, but, yeah. So they're really... Mm -hmm. It's really a reptilian standing in front of you, but because of a frequency that's being played, it actually manipulates our mind and our visual cortex even somehow. And we see what would appear to be a human. We don't actually see the, the we, we see the holographic overlay, if you will, mm -hmm. of the actual entity yeah. that's standing in front of you. And a lot of the leaders, the elites, even politicians, uh, celebrities, musicians. I mean, you you can go down the list. Anyone who's you know well known and popular and pushed by the media and by pop culture in Hollywood, uh, most of the time they're not even human. And then and then you go take it a step further and talk about how uh, Captain Mike Richards talked about how it's not even humans that are funding some of the movies and right. programs and stuff. Right. It's actually ETs funding some of these uh, agendas, and you really have to start questioning things at that point. And then you have NASA, which is putting on this dog and pony show. But the deal with NASA is they, here's my opinion. I don't think NASA has any juris, jurisdiction in space anymore. Maybe the com it's, no. compar it's compartmentalized. It's just kind of a front. Yeah. My it's a, it's, NASA was created to, as, to cover up the real space stuff, in my opinion. It was created yes. to create a fake. So we think that's the only space program going on. 
all we have is rockets and blah blah and uh well, but i think they yeah, did go to this like, i do think they went to the moon while they also filmed fake footage and most of what was shown was the fake filmed footage but they did go and then they encountered all the stuff that was there and they were told hey don't come back you're not welcome here right and that's well, what's been in the moon since 1970. and then you just know? to finish finish my thought on nasa then i'll turn it back over to you um mm -hmm. the so what i what the, what i think the reason why nasa is in every department store every and no matter where you go target marshall's walmart there's nasa shirts it's everywhere you go um that's all we know about um it's pushed in our schools we're taught about it they want you to think that nasa has control over everything that's going on in space when they literally have zero control they might not even have jurisdiction to go to space anymore that's why they have to put these green screen space station mm -hmm. footage in front of us and um, to give the illusion that hey we got we have everything under control guys don't worry but that's not the case now i do believe it's compartmentalized and there are factions of nasa that are existing with their secret space programs as well whistleblowers have even talked about seeing men in nasa uniforms inside the moon so mm -hmm. we have to consider all that uh, but it's all part of the illusion the world within the world right so incredible it's an incredible thing and people if if uh, anyone listening has ever never heard this before this is going to be hard for them to hear because um but it's something that you have to kind of question because there's so much going on since the last three years that i think if you don't look around and see that you know our world is shifting and why is it shifting that you know this is important information i mean it is it's a hard one to swallow it's a big one because yeah. I know, like, I, I'm going to let you talk in a minute, Erin, but um, when I had my first opening, I was telling you this, Tyler, before we started, when I first started listening to say David Wilcock and Corey Good in 2014, 15, it, I, it took me two weeks the first time I heard that there's a secret space program and that people do 20 and backs. And I thought, what is going on? And I was just so shocked. I mean, my whole system went into yeah. like total shock. And I had to think, is this real? You know? but they were talking and giving you so much information and i'm mm -hmm. thinking how can they make this up how can this possibly be made up i right. mean even all the movies that we see the information the, the technology it's all got to exist they can't just make it up it has to be existing so they many say if you can movies. they say if you imagine it it exists somewhere exactly like, exactly yeah. yeah it is yeah and then yeah, I could go on and on about the NASA thing. And yeah, and how... that's very it's so interesting. Well, you know, there's even that what project paperclip that brought them all over from World War II. They were already doing lots of already they had already what do they call re-engineered spacecraft from mm -hmm. the 80s. They were already giving them diagrams. I know William William Tompkins always talked about that. Right. He's the one and, who was involved with that. A lot of people say, you know, a lot of the flat earthers like they show evidence that hey these rockets aren't even going to space but you know they found the trajectory of them and there's even evidence that uh, when they disappear out of our side they're landing like in some island we don't even know about mm. um, but the, if that and that they think that proves that the earth is flat and that yeah. there's no but space not, but, but really they just the don't, <laughs> really they just don't have permission to go to space oh. right? or, or you know they don't have the permission um and then they talk about the firmament but then we have we yeah. talk about the firmament, but then we have the whistleblowers that talk about, I think Daryl James is one of them, but they talk about uh, there's areas with the firmament is a real thing, but there's yes. holes in it, essentially holes. There are spots, locations that where you can pass through and they've already, you think they haven't figured that out by now, <laughs> but they, but they have. So, and sometimes the rockets are going to space, not all of the, all of the time. Mm -hmm. And they never, there's, there's always payloads being brought to develop space stations yes. and things that we don't even know about so it's not just like oh we're going up to do this like that probably every reason we've ever gotten for going to space has been a lie uh, because we know yeah. everything else i think lie. that's true i actually i totally believe, agree with that um do you remember a tv show called the dome i, I do i've, under, I've never under watched the it. dome under, under the, the dome, dome. under and the I, dome i've seen it yeah I used to watch it and it was just such an unusual thing. They didn't know what was wrong, but something was different. And then finally they got to see the dome. And that was like, to me, that's like disclosure again. Here we are, you know, seeing this. And it was so long ago that nobody, and I mean, they did it like, we know how they give it out. It's very small drips. 
and it's it's because they'll never you know they don't want to own what they've done and we and they can't because I, I don't know what the, I don't know what would happen society would just totally you know right disintegrate so I guess it's got to be drips and drabs I don't know it's whatever whatever way it's going to work out it is the way it's going to work out but mm -hmm. anyway Aaron go ahead you want to answer you had something to comment on did you have any comment uh, about the world is within the world or anything that Tyler shared I mean, I have a lot <laughs> I could talk about. Um, well, whatever you want, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Again, like where there's there's like there's like the fake. I call it like the Truman Show reality that yep. we live in, where it's <laughs> it's what they want us to think is all that is and is the reality, and it's 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 like this fake created reality show essentially, and. Um, it's not until you start to awaken think for yourself you're at a certain level where you can it's just becomes obvious you see like it's like you start seeing the strings and the and the you know fake <laughs> stuff going on you're like wait a second this wait that's that's being that's all the stage wait this is fake wait i'm being lied to here and here and here and here um wait this person is clearly controlled by this Creator force above them they're not acting on their own you know you start seeing it and then you're like okay what's really going on here on the planet like what are the there's clearly some some agendas going on by some forces that are trying to steer the planet and steer things to an agenda and, you, and it's like okay well what is that what's going on um you see them pushing the jab hardcore and like why is that why are they why are they so adamant that everyone needs to get this job why it's not for it's obviously not for your health and safety and um I, if people can't see that by now i mean god help them because it's i don't know if you if you haven't woken up to that by now i don't know what will wake you up to that well there's a uh, lot of subtle ways that people can't see it they can't see right it. they won't see it right right mm -hmm. Um, and, and a lot of, but a lot of that has to do with, you know, we're, we're almost from day one, you're, you're programmed in this world. It's a very mind controlled planet in the words of Ken Rolla, who we just had on, like you, you're sent to school and you think it's school. You think, oh, it's education. I'm being educated. No, you're being indoctrinated. You're being programmed and you're being conditioned. And then you're also, whatever your family, whatever religion, whatever their beliefs are, you're being you're getting that programming, whatever your friends, you're getting that programming. Um, college, your work, go down the list, meet whatever political, you know, whatever media you follow, you're being programmed by whatever you're watching on the TV. So essentially, you know, if you're if you're in an unconscious state, you're not, you're living your life with all these beliefs and all these programs, and you're acting from that state you're not really it's not the true you the true you is not your body and it's not your ego that's the false you your true you is your soul which is connected to your higher self that's really the true you and then you, your higher self is incarnated in this body experiencing this body and, and experiencing this reality but it's an experience it's not who you are it's an experience but but when you're unconscious, you think this is who you are. You think this this body and this five sense reality is all that is. This is who I am. I am my name, my body, my job, what I do, my religion, blah, 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 blah. And then you just kind of like unconsciously go through life and that. And then that's when the matrix, that's where the matrix wants you. That's where the control system wants. They want to keep you in that state, unconscious, easily manipulated, um, just feeding off of you and you're just falling into every trap and you know and then you die and then you they want you to reincarnate and just keep doing it over and over and over again right um but when you awaken you you just realize like oh i'm so much bigger than this there's so much more going on than what i'm being told reality is so much more than this five sense reality you know there there is a much bigger reality um even if you don't wake up to the you know the fact that there's life all over the universe like just waking up to that is is uh kind of it you know yeah and then you can't be you can't be controlled and manipulated you can't be controlled once you awaken to a certain level because you no longer 
just do what you're told. You no longer just believe what you're told to believe because you're told to believe it. You no longer submit to authority just because they tell you to. Uh, you no longer get an injection just because they tell you to. You do your own research. You think for yourself. You, you, you do introspection. You examine yourself. You, you know, you, you work on yourself. Um, you connect with your heart. You connect with your soul, your true self. You live from your heart. The mind. You're, everyone. You know, so many people are living only in their minds, and that's when you're easily programmed and manipulated. But when you get in your heart, that's when. And your mind is supposed to be a servant to your heart. Um, that's when you can't be controlled anymore. And that's what they're so desperate to keep everyone out. You know, they, they, when you look at how society is structured and the matrix is structured, it's all designed to keep you locked into the lower three chakras. So money, sex, power, right. And keep you obsessed with that. Keep you out of your heart. Keep you, keep you, um, out of connection with your, with your soul, which is what that that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, the second you do that, they, you're above the, it's almost like you're above the control system to a certain degree. You can't, you can't really be, they can, they can mess with you and you can get caught in certain ways, but you can't really be controlled because, um, you know, you're, you're basically living from source at that point. Right. And it's, they try they to can't. shut off your heart. Like that's what, yeah. the, the, um, sorry to interrupt you but no 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 please they going back to what you said for the heart and the gut so yeah it's the, the mind is a servant to the heart but everyone has these walls up around their heart because of the harsh conditions that we're um living in our harsh yes. environment and everything the right. trauma and everything so people put these walls up around their heart so then they're forced to just be overthinking everything but even before you get to the heart, it's your gut reaction that should be operating. That, that's where, that's our first mm -hmm. brain. Like the Native Americans said, we have three brains, the gut, the heart, and our mind. But the gut mm -hmm. reaction, your initial gut feeling, that's what you should act on. Then your heart processes and you, and you, you, know, you act mm -hmm. out from there. And the mind is just to, like to get you from point A to point B. And it's like a logical uh, thinking. But uh, mind so is just so you can operate in third dimension. That's the right. only reason for the mind. And it tries to and, keep, yeah yeah um keep you safe fight or flight you know but i do I, I do i do want to go back to the um the dome you were talking about and sure. that and that concept and and i hate to talk about the flat earth but it's starting to become so prominent i, I feel like yeah. it's everywhere i feel like it's an issue that should be addressed even though it's a fabricated issue and they're forcing us to address it but i feel like um we need to put the other side of the story out there uh, because some people ultimately everyone's confused there's no foundation of truth to begin with so mm -hmm. you know we're all just mm -hmm. trying to figure this out together but um what i see happening is uh so somebody we had somebody on our show that said flat earthers are living in 2d a two-dimensional reality yes i heard that uh, I think, yeah. so that started that got my wheels spinning you know mm -hmm. i started really thinking like wow because i've heard the 2d described as the underworld and it, and I've seen like channelers and psychics like go there, remote viewers see what they call the second dimension. And it's a very, very, very dense version of earth. It kind of looks the same, but it's a lot darker, a lot denser. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I started realizing, I'm like, wow, that's why you get on TikTok. TikTok promotes every other TikTok that's on the main feed is flat earth, flat earth. You don't see anything. Really? About the I don't space go program. on it much. No. Oh, it's, it's like overly promoted every day. Yeah, it's like the it. trending hashtag. Everything. That's another mind control. Yeah. Right. So, oh, oh yeah. So people, oh. and then there's a lot of fake information out there, but it mm -hmm. looks like real information to support it. But that's not, that's neither here nor there. What they're doing, I realize is psychologically, they are getting people to assist in their own devolution back into the second dimension and to live, to exist in a 2d reality where the earth is flat mm -hmm. in, the, in a 2d reality, the earth is flat. And just by evolving into or ascending into the third and fourth, fifth densities, it becomes spherical by laws of the universe, just by the laws of oh, physics. I love that. It, right. it becomes spherical as you ascend. And then you ascend even further than that, it becomes almost holographic. And then that's where we get into mm. like the holographic universe. So as you ascend, it the earth changes and ascends with you and vice versa. But what they're doing is they're trying to devolve a mass portion of the population 
wow. back into the second dimension to ultimately they're like hijacking the ascension process so oh, yeah. a bunch of us are trying to are, are ascending they have a large number a mass amount of people assisting and aiding in their own devolution by believing in the flat earth but then you you take it a step further I've I've actually given the flat earth a lot of time and I've listened to a lot of videos. I have too. I've given it some, but not as much as you. I love what you're saying. Yeah. But be, because I re, I've realized what happens is when I see these uh, flat earthers um, talk and share their version of the story, they are not coming from, it's nothing is intuitive or coming from their heart. Mm -hmm. They're coming at you from this arrogant, condescending place. Like I know better than you. Um, you know, and they, they kind of like, oh, I'll, you'll find out one day, you know, I'm, I feel sorry for you, but you'll get there type of mentality. Like they're putting themselves on a pedestal, like they've reached this finish Oh, line. ego. Yeah. yeah. It's like, all. Oh, and I'm like, okay, ego. so that's what happens. So this information oh, yes. is completely manipulating the people away from their gut and their heart. And it's all in their head. And they're overloading them with this information that looks kind of credible sometimes. And they're like, oh, wow, wait a minute. Yes, I need to look yes. at this again. At like, first yeah. glance, a lot of it sounds convincing. Yeah. Right. Until you do. But, but, when you, yes. but when you ask somebody about the flat earth, you quickly hear them parroting things that they've seen mm -hmm. online but no one's responding from their gut and their heart and because once you do that you you know you're operating from a higher frequency and therefore it, in, inevitably that you're going to be existing in a reality where the earth is a sphere so it's like this whole mass psyop to devolve the population back into the second dimension wow. or the underworld that's an incredible i i was not aware of it that way that's that's a very good uh analogy i love that because it makes so much sense because i love that you said as we rise the earth shifts it's, it's it gets to be a sphere it gets to be holographic that makes so much sense because our density less lessens as we're raising our frequency right it's just like the analogy like think of a side scrolling video game like the video mm -hmm. games all started off 2d with the side scroll and then as the video games evolved, oh, yeah. the technology evolved, they, it would turn into 3D. The, the flat circle became a sphere. I mean, it's, it's right there in front of it's your eyes. It's true. It's so true. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That was, that's amazing uh, insight. So um, would you like to share anything, either of you, about how your reality shifted and what, what exactly was your catalyst and where do you see um, yourself now and, what, and how, how, do you, how do you view where you're at now compared to where you, where you started. And you could take that and then I'll, I'll hop in after that. Um, my, so my awakening happened in 2012. Um, I, if you said you watched my video, so you know, about, so you now know about my whole story, I but I'll, I will recommend say it. it. Well, just give a little, get a little overview of it to the I'll, listeners. I'll give them a briefer version of it. Yeah. Uh, my my catalyst. Yeah, I grew up in, I grew up very Christian, a Christian family, um, and that was who I what, thought I was until I, about the age of 25, when I had my, what I call my awakening, and I just, it was like, these light bulbs just started going off where, well, there was a couple of things before the big awakening that kind of started me on that, like I started, I started finding out a little bit about the control system on a 3D level, at least, like the cabal, as we call them, the Illuminati, the New World Order. And I re I started realizing, wait, there's like this group that's behind the scenes manipulating and controlling things on the planet and, and kind of sneakily doing all these things and controlling, manipulating and uh, for, and they want to make a one world, new world order, one world government, like that's their end goal. So I kind of, I kind of knew that, but I didn't know quite how extensive it was or quite how deep that rabbit hole went. Uh, and then... I, but so, but I was still, I still had my Christian faith at that time. But then in, I started just questioning. I was like, wait, how do I know what I believe is true? Like, I've never really looked into it. I just kind of, it was handed to me and I just kind of like believed it, you know, it's like, cause I'm supposed to. And then you, and then what you do is you start forming your identity gets all attached to that belief. And now it's, that belief and you who you think you are is one and the same and that's why people are so attached to their beliefs and so will so vehemently defend them you know because it, it's like to them they think they are that belief well sure it's their uh, anchor. And, it's like their anchor on the earth 
Right. And it anchors. Yeah. And it, and it helps them make sense of reality. And it's like their whole anchor. It's their whole stability. It's uh, it, so it's too scary for them to, to even question it, but they don't, but ultimately they don't even know why they, they just believe it. They think they do a lot of time. I thought I did, but I really didn't. So I started questioning it and I started just kind of finding things. I found David Icke really early on and mm. it fascinated, it, his information was just fascinating to me. And it was so powerful, you know, and it just resonated so strongly with me. I knew there was truth. I just like knew deep down there was truth in what he was saying. And I, would just watch every video on YouTube I could find. And I was just taking it all in and doing my, and then doing my research on things he would say that I'd, I'm like, Oh, what, let me look more into that. That's fascinating. You know? And I would just do research on different, different things he was bringing up. And he was very much talking about how, you know, we live in a five sense reality, but the reality is so much bigger than that. But the control system wants to keep you locked into the five sense reality, keep you in your small self thinking that, Oh, little me, you know, what power do I have? And he's like, you are literally all that is. He says it like, you are all that ever was, is, and ever will be having an experience. And that just resonated so strong. I'm like, yes, that's it. Mm-hmm. So, all, so another way to put that is we're all God experiencing itself as, as, as me. And you are as you and Tyler as you and a point of awareness, but it's an experience. Don't tell me who I am. Ultimately, we're all the same (laughs) being. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it's not who you are. And the control system wants wants you to be locked into the experience as if that's all you are, keep you unconscious, keep you being manipulated, feeding into, continually feeding into that system. Um, Can I add to that? Yeah, that was kind of, he was my big awakening. and And then I found David Wilcock. I found Dolores Cannon. I found Project Camelot early on. Um... And I was just fascinated by everything they were talking about. And then uh, there was a YouTube channel called Spirit Science. I remember back then that I, was, I found and that kind of led me down all the spiritual information. And um, I kind of just kept going, but I've spent five years. I had no one to talk to about any of this stuff. I had no friends or family that was on this level that I could talk to about any of this. Stuff. So I just, I spent five years pretty isolated in this regard, like just taking all this in and, and kind of like processing it and growing, you know? And then I went to my first conference in 2017 and that changed my life. And ever since that's how I met Tyler at, at a conference and we started the podcast. Um, but yeah, the, it was like this one little, it's like, it all started from a small spark that starts a big wildfire kind of the way to look yeah. at, it, you know, it's like, I it's guess. like, it's like my soul was like nudging me, my higher self, you could say was nudging me, a little bit at a time, like, hey, look at this. Hey, look at this. Follow this trail. Hey, and then and you listened, and you listened. Yeah. I listened, but so many people shut that out. Exactly. Right? Uh-huh. But when you follow that, it that's what is going to, you know, your life will unfold magically because it's trying to show you what you need and and show right. you a greater reality well, that's going on. Who you really are. And so. and what you said earlier too, uh, how the um. People are scared of the truth. They don't actually want the truth. It's mm-hmm. not that they don't want the truth. It's that they don't want to flip their whole life upside down now to exactly. accept that as a reality because that's what happens. Um, mm-hmm. You know, yes. family, friends, everything you're like, you, you attach your identity to your life, right? So uh, mm-hmm. you're, it's an entire paradigm shift when you start acknowledging that this stuff is real and everything's a lie and an illusion. So there, it literally flips your life upside down to accept that as truth. And you have to go back to the drawing board and f- figure out who you are, the exactly. people you thought you loved, you don't oh, align, you, know, yep. you don't, you don't yep. resonate with certain people. It's the journey to truth, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly. It's, and, yes, that's exactly what it is. And to go back to what Aaron was saying about the mind control and everything, they uh, imagine uh, the planet is a sphere, right? And then there are, there's all these rings around it that actually are imprisoning the planet. Like imagine um, a satellite tracking map. Have you seen that? Where it's just uh, the whole planet yeah. is encompassed. Imagine each one of those rings being a belief system. Mm. And then it creates this gigantic thought prison around the planet. And each mm-hmm. each belief system is alt- is a thought prison within itself. So it doesn't matter which one of those beliefs that you subscribe to that you believe in as long as you believe in something you're limiting yourself Mm. you're limiting yourself and your potential and that's what they want that's why they're all in place they don't care what you believe in as long as you believe in something (laughs) and the 
and that's a good way to imagine the the prison that we're the thought prison that we're existing in. But to answer your question about the catalyst for me, I feel like I always knew. Um, I always knew that nothing made sense. Uh, even mm. you know, I was I grew up in a Christian and a Catholic family. My parents were separated. One slept my mom's side was Christian. That's how I was Catholic. I was going to church. I eventually went to Bible school. But back then, even as a child, I didn't, I just wasn't into it. I didn't buy it. It didn't, I felt like it was being forced on me. I yeah. had that rebel gene in me always as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like my mom would make me put my hand on the Bible and swear or, to, or wow. something. And I would put my hand behind my back and cross my fingers. I'm like, this is, you know, <laughs> I, was a rebel. Yep. I, I just, I just couldn't get it, you know. And uh, eventually I, broke free from that and just became, an, I didn't believe in anything. I just became this atheist. I didn't believe in anything. I'm like, screw it. Nothing exists. You know, it's all you science evolution. Slate. Yeah. And then um, my mother passed away when I was 24 and all, it, my entire world flipped upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started having, I became an experiencer. I started having experiences, which changed my life and forced me to believe in the things that I had told myself weren't true but it didn't take me long to accept them because I think it was always within me. I was just suppressing myself to mm -hmm. fit in. I didn't know right. where I belonged. Um, we don't, that's the entire game, right? That's the trick. So true. They, they want you confused. So you're constantly grabbing onto this and grabbing onto that. And you're joining yep. this group and that club and this, you want to, you're trying to find some sense of purpose and, mm -hmm. th and then that's what everyone's doing. So you, you find a group of people that you can somewhat identify with like, okay, that's who I am. I'm joining this group, but then that you're forced, like, I, unfortunately, my mother's transition was what it was, what had to happen to wake me up and snap me out of it. Um, but she's still here with me and I understand death. And I look at that completely differently now. It's like uh, completely yeah. differently. It's nothing at all. What this, that's another there, program. It, there is itself. no death. Isn't there that, is no isn't it's that the most, and that's the most beautiful understanding that you can come to. Right. That, you know, they're always with us. Yeah. Then yes. you don't fear like the entire game mm -hmm. is they get you to fear death. Like you would yes. never get a jab unless you were scared to die. Right. So like exactly. if you're not scared to die, then you don't need the jab. Like, I don't care. Like, bring it on. Like, I know right. what happens. Right. I know what That's happens. Exactly where I'm at. I was at. And I'm now, if you understand your own, your own power and your body's power, like mm -hmm. to heal and to be like, it's like, why would I? Why would I think I need an injection to be healthy? It does. It's the most well, ridiculous. It kind of to me, it forced us to look at ourselves and where were we willing to stand for mm -hmm. ourselves. I mean, we had that. You talk about sovereignty, and I know that right. that was something we were going to talk about. But when you talk about sovereignty, this is what it drove us to be. Choose: Are we going to be sovereign, or are we going to allow these people to tell us what to do? Right. Yeah. And there's yeah. um the book, the Thea Uber Prophecy. That's an incredible book, Samuel oh, Chong, who, uh, the Thea Uba prophecy. Okay. Um, Samuel oh yes, Chong. I think I have it, and I haven't read it yet. <laughs> oh, it's, it's oh, a good you, one. You okay, should. Good. It's I'll really good. To, you should. Um, but Samuel Chong, he's a translator of that book. He mm -hmm. translated it into Chinese. He's speaking at our conference because the author is dead. So he relays the author's message, and he's doing a beautiful job of that. But they talk about a time in Lumerian history. And he kind of was taken to a past life there and he's shown um, the death of one of their leaders at the time. And no one mourned, no one grieved, no one did anything. They actually had this huge celebration because they knew that he was free. He's being freed from his restraints in the physical vessel. That's yeah. the way they looked at it. He was being freed. Okay. So they had this massive celebration when he died and like there was no grieving period. Mm -hmm. And he, it, it gave him the abductee of the, the author of the book, a whole new perspective on death. And they showed him that you don't die. And they showed how the soul transitions into all of these different lifetimes and these different avatars, these different bodies. And you experience everything in this amazing way. Now, yes, the controllers, the reptilians, whatever you want to call them came and put this, uh, they set the soul trap here on, on our planet, the reincarnation cycle or what, what a lot of people like to call it. And they say that the uh, serpent eating its own head or the infinity symbol represents that. But according to Max Spears, he said his understanding of it was that that was a real trap. But there's this window now, this ascension, this window where we don't have to do it again. We don't have to be stuck. 
And that's why it's different now than it was in Atlantean times. And this, this whole awakening that's going along with it and the energies that they're, we're moving into in the solar system, like the planet itself, like it's not, it's not like Atlantean times. It mirrors it in a lot of ways, but it's different this time around. And we have this window of opportunity to actually break free and succeed in a way that's never been done before. Now, I do believe there are people who are going to stay stuck in the lower dimensions and densities, and they're going to exist. They're going to live out however many lives they need to until uh, their soul mm -hmm. is at a place where it can break free also. But mm -hmm. for the people that are ready, there is a golden opportunity right now to ascend into the golden age, I believe. Yes. And didn't we create that? Didn't we create that with the harmonic convergence? I mean, what I, re I think that's the one in 1987 that I remember hearing about. I don't remember it happening because I wasn't paying attention. I was that, having babies. So <laughs> that's the year I was born. <laughs> was it? Yeah. My son yeah. was born the year before you. Yep. My mother was yeah. the year before. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So, um, yeah, because I remember uh, I have I had a good thought. Now I've kind of lost that thought. What was my thought? You were talking uh, about the harmonic convergence. Yeah. The harmonic convergence was when they asked the mass consciousness, like it was like, you know, source said, do you choose to break out of this? Are you choosing to awaken? And we all said, yes. Our higher selves all said, yes. Yeah. That's how I understand that with the harmonic convergence is. Yeah. But I don't know if you have heard of it or even, or you probably have. I mean, you've done a lot of research. Well, I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of it. It was no, the major turning point, I think, that the masses decided on this planet that we were going to move into the higher consciousness. Because we had yeah. to make the choice because we're always the ones, it's free will. Yeah. Free will. We had to make the choice. Right. That's how right. I understand it. So, yeah, it's a, so good what you're exactly. saying. Yes. Yeah, there is like it that lines up with the window right now that we mm -hmm. have. And the window of ascension, that's where we, we've created it. And mm -hmm. even in 2012, when everyone thought that was the, but, that was the window. Yeah. But the window is an opportunity. That's mm -hmm. what people need to understand. That doesn't mean they just get out like that's why True. they're trying so hard to keep everyone suppressed still so they stay in the trap because it's probably still there but once you are aware of it right that's you, you and you live your life in a way to where you are just uh, oh, every day asking yourself who you are and on that path of self-discovery and you you become sovereign right yeah um then you have that opportunity to not do this again but some people might even want to come back and help <laughs> they might even well, that's you know, they it. might you that's know. true yeah yeah. yeah. So there's it's and we can't like um we take for granted the amnesia or we don't uh, that's not the way to put it, but the amnesia is stronger than you think. Like I think the some veil, stars, like the veil they talk about. Um no, I mean the amnesia when we come here, we forget who we okay, are. Yeah, we go through the river. I think there I think this is I believe this to my core. I, I think that some star seeds come here thinking it's gonna be easier than it is, not understanding. Yeah not understanding how strong the amnesia is and then the indoctrination and mind control. And I feel like sometimes they get themselves, they'll come here on this mission and it might take them a couple lifetimes in that reincarnation cycle to break free from it. It's not like they're going to come here and do it on the first go. Maybe oh, some sure. people, maybe some people are, but I really believe that like the amnesia is potent. Whatever is happening yes. is potent. And if you're not, if you're not being made aware of this, these concepts to at least start thinking about things and you surround yourselves, you are who you surround yourself with and your environment. And mm -hmm. some people plant themselves in the, in the environment that is engineered by the matrix. So, um, there it's tough for people to break free from that, or even understand that they are a star seed that came from another planet or star mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. to incarnate here and do this job from the inside out. It's an inside job. But you have to remember that first. And that's why there's so many targeted individuals and so many people being attacked upon birth, because they know that if those star seeds, if everybody remembers why they came here, their game's over. That's why they're constantly suppressing us right out of the gate. Um, and that starts, you know, the whole birthing process is number one, exhibit A, right? That's that's exactly that is all set up to traumatize us and fracture our mind right off the bat. So the mind control process actually starts in the womb. Yes, yes. And we're, we're going to, sh we're shifting all that now. I think, you know, I just, I just saw it's like Sherry Divban put out a, a consciousness birthing. She, they, she was talking, I didn't read, listen to it yet, but she talked about that it's, it's coming out. And yes. I think we're, the fact that you're saying what you're saying, and both of you are sharing so much about this, I think it's just so wonderful that you, you know, so much already. 
at your ages, which is so important because you're you're teaching me a lot with what you've figured out, what you've uncovered. I mean, I got my parts, and then you've you're bringing in like this whole nother level because you're you're even more awake in what you're bringing through, even though it took you time to get there too. It's everybody's journey, and you know it's a choice, as you said. You both had a catalyst that catapulted you to these levels, so. Um, but it's what? a choice every day to keep fighting. It's a it's choice every true. day. It's not it's just true. one catalyst and one and done and, and you're out, like, and you're free. Right, um, right. But know, at so least you have to choose the lifestyle that's going to get you ridiculed and not laughed at and t- targeted. But well, it's a it's a constant. Yeah, it's a constant uh, decision every day to right. say, I really want to do this. This is important to me. This is my passion. I believe this is what we're meant to do here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. So. um. I mean, do you feel that humanity can heal from this secrecy and illusion that they've been under? Oh, yeah. I I think that's what's happening right now. That's why everybody's so confused. Um, People are waking up, but then they're getting angry at the same time because there was no foundation of truth to begin with. uh, And they don't know where they stand. And and I think that's why we're always going inward and doing the shadow work. And Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, absolutely people can heal from this. And it's already happening. And people are being activated healers channelers psychics i mean that they're here being activated for a reason so we can remember and tap into these abilities that are innate within the human but they're just being suppressed and as we activate our dormant dna and all that occurs the healing is natural i think um because once you're aware of that stuff you you don't fit into your body anymore once you start ascending like it's uncomfortable to be here so you either just live your life miserably or you heal and you do something about it and i think I think our body tells us a lot about where we are in our path. And if you're in pain every day or something's majorly wrong with you, something is going on energetically that you need to address. And, but our body is forcing us and everything that's happening is forcing us, those who are ready to heal. And I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Thank you. I love that answer. Aaron, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Second, what Tyler said, very well said, I think, um, you know the the ascension is happening and the planet is ascending and it's kind of like you're either going to go with it or you're going to have to go somewhere else because it you're not gonna, if you're not frequency specific you can't you physically can't be on the planet while it's at a higher frequency to put it simply so um so i think a byproduct of that is this awakening that is happening um because it's like everything's coming to the surface right now as we talk about everything that used to be very very well hidden uh everyone's even even on an individual level everyone's traumas everyone's shit to put it is is coming up to to be dealt with but if people aren't ready to deal with it they're kind of like having a hard time right now and lashing out and getting triggered constantly and um it's because they have a lot of crap that they're not healing (laughs) you know it's like you got to heal your stuff and uh you got to look at everything that's coming up all the lies are being revealed all the you know darkness is being revealed and it's not that things a lot of people think things are getting worse they're not getting worse it's just they're being revealed they're, everything's coming to the surface so we're seeing it for the first time we're experiencing it for the first time so it seems like things are getting worse and things are really chaotic and crazy right now but it's only well it's two reasons it's because of that and then second reason is because it's the control system is desperate and they're they're lashing out right now because they're trying to hang on so they're throwing out everything they they have all at once to desperately hang on to whatever control they think they can and uh try to stop the ascension in any way they can or stop as many people from ascending as they can which i think is one of the main reasons for the jab is to uh disconnect people from their souls so they don't ascend and they stay stuck in this dense reality um and there's there a lot were of, a lot of placebos uh, with that jab. There was a lot of placebos given out there too. So yeah, yeah. You know, other people don't even may not have even gotten any of it. So mm-hmm. no, no, absolutely. Uh, and you know. and don't think because you got like you can absolutely heal from it and you can yep. detox from it. Do not think just because you got it, you're screwed. That is not what I'm saying. That is I not know. true. I'm just bringing that out. <laughs> um, yes, but thank you. And that is absolutely true. They did. It was proven. They they found that some of them were just saline. And yes. it's like, okay, well, we'll think about this. If let you know, from a from a normal person's perspective, like 
it's like, okay, ask yourself, why would they feel the need to make a whole bunch of them saline if the jab was supposed to be a good thing created to fight COVID and keep you healthy, blah, blah, blah. The, Does that make any sense to anyone? Like, oh, we're going to make a certain percentage of them nothing. Yeah, or saline. I, I made sense to me. I understood it because I felt it, like that was to pull people in to know it was it was it was okay. Well, yeah, think, yeah. Well, think, it only makes sense if it's a nefarious thing. It only makes sense if it's okay. There you go. There's an agenda going on where they oh we which, can't. Which have is so a many hard one for, for people to hear. I think. Let me. It's a hard one for people to hear, but they know we bring can't. In. Have, any, um, sure. negative reactions or deaths too too soon so we have to make a certain percentage that and then you know and then they got worse like the jabs got worse as they were rolling them and out it depends it seemed... on each area i mean different areas were given different levels different parts of the world i mean right. there's so much to right. this there isn't just a jab there's a number of them but the thing right. is, it's is, not just one thing right let me bring a new perspective to this yes they can't all be killing us right it can't be 100 percent effective because then it is obvious so yeah not everyone is going to be affected and there's different levels and ingredients and different cocktails and each one has its own thing but ultimately they're experimenting with it but i'd like to take it back to operation warp speed everyone that flipped out about trump um oh you know, yeah um talking about operation warp speed to get these vaccines out as, as oh, quick right. as possible but what we need to understand is that this is just a theory. What if he did that knowing that they didn't actually have the real jab ready and forced them to mm -hmm. force their hand because they probably never wanted him to say that. Now he forced their hand and they had to come up with something. So they just throw out saline shots just uh -huh. to have right. them ready to meet the That's demand it. that he created now. And he actually accelerated that agenda, but for a positive reason. They might have even saved lives. A lot of the people who got it early on who got the saline and that's why they have booster after booster after booster. Um, you can edit any of this out that you want if you feel like it's going to get taken down. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, right. But no, it's it's right. interesting, and you know, I feel like I love that because I I never thought of it that way. But that's a very good uh, point. It's bring. a theory. I mean, I, it's, yeah, it makes a lot of theory, sense. We don't know the truth yeah. of any of it. We don't know any of it, and yeah. will we ever know? That's the question. And and um, not just to go on about. Trump, but think about everyone's like, why does he support it? Why is he calling himself the father of the jab now? And like weird things. But I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, if you're doing the art of war, the 5D chess type of thing, like they're waiting for him to go against the jab, right? And to be anti jab. They're right. waiting for him to, as soon as he does that, they're going to take it, run with it, drag his name oh, through the I mud see. even yeah. more. You know what I mean? And then right. every time he goes up there and promotes it, they're like, damn it. Like, we can't, like, they're just waiting for him to take yeah, the bait. He, he and he's going up there. Well. Yeah. And going the, the there. media can't use that as like, oh, everyone who doesn't get the jab is, Another, is following Trump. Trump and they're, yeah. uh, you know, Trump's it would actually Trump's be, for all these, for everything. Like, right. It would so be it separates it that. Too. It would be political suicide for him to do that, actually, if you think about right. it. Oh, absolutely. I Not that this is good. about politics, but it, it it's all connected. It's all connected. It, it's it's just it's all connected. The game. It's the big game that's going on, and you know, right. he plays it well. He plays it well. Let's put it that way. So I'm I'm so right. you know we just this has been so exciting, and you've brought so many interesting ideas forward, and I'm I'm really um really happy i know time is moving so um should i ask this what does sovereignty mean to each of you let's go with that and then we're gonna do final some final words and you can talk about your game I, I just think it means asking yourself every day uh who am i and yeah. figuring out who you are and not who you told who you know you're always told who you are by the external sources and like what aaron described earlier so just figuring out who you are and where you stand on your own without any any external influence about anyone influencing you, telling you any different um, and seeing where you fit in and just questioning everything, every move you make, every decision, every choice you make, like question it, ask yourself why you're doing it. And sometimes the answer is, oh, I'm doing it because I'm people pleasing. I want to make this person happy. Mm. Am I doing this because I want to make myself happy? Like, and then you, then you start like figuring out who you are, what you like, and the things that you truly align with. And, you know, sometimes your circle becomes very small because you realize like everything I was surrounding myself with wasn't actually helping or assisting me with who I am. It actually was distracting me from who I am. Mm. And you have to... Um, that's what the shadow work is, is like facing yourself in the mirror 
and asking yourself the hard questions and looking at yourself and holding yourself accountable and being able to forgive yourself because we all, we're not all not perfect. We all screw up. We've all done things that we regret. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all part of the experience too. Your darkest moments can be your greatest teachers if you allow them to be. Um, but you have to be self-aware. You have to start asking yourself these questions and then you can become sovereign and you can stand on your own and at least be confident enough to say like, I at least know on some level, we don't truly know who we are while we're in the third dimension, right? But you can at least get some concept of it and grasp onto like uh, some form of self-identity for the first time uh, in your life and purpose without having to attach to anything else except for your soul, to your soul. And the end. Thank you. Yeah, well said. Go ahead, Aaron, your turn. What does sovereignty yeah, it, to you? Yeah. It means you do not give your power away to anything outside of you. It means you you've taken your power back. It means you you do not you do not answer to any external authority because that's there is no external authority. There is you are like I was saying before, you are the universe experiencing itself. And it doesn't mean because a lot of people you say things like that and they think you're saying, Oh, I am God, as in like this version of this me, which is not the real me, is it's like, no, 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 that's this is the small self. This is the experience in this third dimension temporarily. The real you is source ultimately. But I mean, the real you, you could say is your soul, which is your higher self, but that ultimately is source just divide, it's like divided right. up, but it's ultimately all source. Yes, they're all really all, all there is is yeah. one like the law of one there is only one of us here and it, and it is source infinite awareness infinite consciousness every having individual every individual is a fragment of source yes if you want, yeah. if you want yes. to look at it like that yeah. we're all soul yeah. fragments of the infinite creator that took a long so, time so to it's coming that. to that realization <laughs> ultimately all you is just coming to that realization and then realizing Okay, so that means I am fully 100% responsible for my own decisions, for myself, for everything I do in this in this lifetime, in this dimension, in this body. And there is any any so-called authority. I you know, it's like you have true morality where you do not do things just because you're told to do them. That is the opposite of morality, and unfortunately, that's what a lot of the programming is. Oh, just just obey blindly these what you're told and don't question it. Well, how do you know what you're obeying and what you're doing is the right thing to do if you're just doing things without questioning? Like that's not, that's that's a very anti-life um, teaching and, and uh, you know, programming that we're, we're given. So when you wake up, you realize, oh, there's no such thing as authority. I am my own authority and that's what self-sovereignty is. Uh, I am responsible for myself because I am the universe that experience itself. So I am responsible for bringing the light of consciousness and, and source to this, you know, to, to the planet and to others. And like, when you can connect to that, then you can truly, you're, you're a light basically on the planet rather than like parasiting off of everything around you and trying to feed yourself from all these things that will never feed your soul will never make you happy, will never make you fulfilled because you're not connected to your true self. It really, it's that simple. So when you do, you have sovereignty and you do not, you cannot be manipulated and controlled because you, you, even if you don't consciously fully understand who you really are, you, you understand the principle of that and you live from that place. And right. then, um, that's, that's it, you know? And you so want to know, you want to know one way to know that it's all bullshit Go ahead. Try, think, try thinking for yourself without getting punished. <laughs> exactly. The entire, the entire system set up to punish you when you think for yourself and you quit obeying. Oh, it's I mean, it is. And that's that's the red flag. That's the tell tall that tell all right there. Oh, I mean, I love, I love how that. dare you think for yourself and not blindly obey what we tell you? Right. And yeah, think yeah I have, I have a cute you. little anecdote to that just before we're ending. My, my son would get in trouble at school because he'd, get, he'd ask too many questions. And the mm -hmm. teacher would call me up and say, your son, just he just can't stop asking questions. And I said, this was high school at this point. And I said, are you kidding? I said, He's, you want him to be this cookie cutter kid? You want him to be this like, what, follow in, follow in line with what you, you're not capable of answering? 
and she was speechless. She didn't know what to say. So I hey, said, hey. And that's you... what it takes people yeah. to stand up like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a she's never thought about it that way before, probably. She, could, she 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 didn't know what to say because I said he's not a cookie right. cutter kid. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. And yeah. She, like, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he didn't know I said that. I told him that recently, and he was very. He was like, "Oh, you said that." Hmm. Because <laughs> I didn't always tell him what they called. It was like, why bother? You know, right. he's, he's got to be, right. he's got to just, you know, do his thing. He had to do what he had to do. But anyway, so I know you have uh, an amazing gift to uh, share for the for the listeners is a beautiful, generous gift you're giving to them. So do you want to, Tyler, you want to tell us about it? Yeah. So we're offering a free live stream pass um, to the listeners, whoever gets lucky enough to yeah. get it. Uh, congratulations. But a free live stream pass to our upcoming conference, uh, May 22nd through the 25th, our second conference like uh, that you mentioned earlier. Last year was a huge success. This year, we're hoping it's just as good, if not better. And we're really excited about it. But we're offering a free pass to your audience and listeners and uh, hopefully they get to enjoy it because it's going to be a it's a beautiful lineup of speakers the information is always fabulous but the energy that comes from it is, is just palpable and even if you're watching it online i still feel like it's the energy is contagious and uh so we're excited about the event and i hope that whoever wins the live stream pass gets to enjoy it thank you it's a it's a fabulous gift and i know that it's well worth it because i've listened to all the last year's versions and it was just amazing just great stuff that you brought through and thank i remember you. when you put it on last year mm -hmm. i was aware of it but it was fabulous it was fabulous what you brought through so um any last words anything you want to share that you feel has to be said today anything else you want to share uh, I, I don't take things so seriously and don't forget to have fun yeah, i love it <laughs> Aaron, what's yes. your um yeah uh realize this isn't this is just an experience you're having um which is why you shouldn't take things so seriously because it's just an experience but that the good news is that means death like we were saying death isn't real it's just a transition to a different state of consciousness essentially and uh it's more real actually when you die it's then it's more real than this temporary existence um the ascension is happening we are the future is brighter than you can possibly imagine in my opinion i i do think when within many of our lifetimes we will experience a beautiful beautiful world uh, and the control system will be will have fallen and uh, there is nothing to fear and there's absolutely everything, everything to be excited about and hope for so yeah, Keep that and in mind. well said. And be present. Like the definition of anxiety is worrying about yes. the future, and they want you worried about the future always. That's yeah. why they place, you know, that's why their retirement plans and things of that nature. <laughs> you're, you're worried yeah, about the end exactly. of your life. They're, you're worried about what you're going to do at the end of your life, and you're not even living in the moment. You're not exactly. present, and you're working your life away. So. Uh, don't right. forget to be present when you when you do start to get anxiety about the future, which I do. We all do. We all worry about things, but is, uh, take your pull yourself out of your head and just be present. Start observing your surroundings and watch how your mood changes. Watch how you relax. Uh, you don't need anxiety medication. You just need to stop, you know, allowing yourself to be pulled eight different directions at once. Bring yourself, bring it all back in, and just observe what's around you. If you're outside, like. Watch the leaves blowing in the wind, observe the animals and the insects, whatever, and really look at it, really observe it, be a present of, of your surroundings, be aware of your surroundings. It changes the course of your entire day, then eventually your entire life. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's beautiful yeah. said as well. They're just perfect, you know, it's, and I'm going to just thank, thank the audience who's listening. We're going to thank you all and any kind of comments you'd like to give to Tyler and Aaron, we'd love your feedback. So I always ask for that and all their contact information will be available at the, after the interview. And I really want to thank you, each of you, Tyler and Aaron, for your incredible persistence and passion to bring through the truth and your amazing pathfinders and way showers. And I, I, I called you the divine detectives <laughs> who, are forever like digging, who, are, who are forever digging deeper to unravel and deliver truth of who we are meant to be. And you are uncovering the truths of our abilities we may be unaware of, and these truths will set us free to join our galactic brothers and sisters in our cosmic universe. And so the divine human is rising and we hold unlimited potential and gifts as we create our, our own new earth realities. 
Thank you both for your courage to step into owning your divine light, which is the words I always use. And as we raise our heart's frequency, know that we are nourished with the love of the universe. I am Yara Atlantica Miller, soul name of Janet Miller, and I will see you all in the next episode.